And hey guys, welcome back to the channel, back with The Wandering Mariner. It is Tuesday evening. I'm home a little bit early today, so I wanted to knock out a video. You guys have been leaving lots of great questions, and I kind of want to do as many videos and feedback to your guys' questions as possible. So today we're kind of staying on the theme of career opportunities with Military Sea Lift Command and in the Merchant Marine, and kind of it'll be in tandem with answering your questions. So here we go. First comment I got was from Ezra Bogans. He says, so I definitely want to have a 20 year career here at, at Military Sea Lift Command. Do you have any tips or suggestions on how I could be someone that they would want to keep around and I would be able to rise through the ranks and maybe be a captain at some time or point? And if you are getting into the Merchant Mariner field and I know when you're really young, you always see the long game. You're, you're thinking about like, I'm going to make this a career because you're investing your time. But honestly, I think that anybody is thinking about 20 years of doing anything with your life. That is a very long goal, especially when you haven't had a chance to quite get into the game a lot and kind of have the experiences of it and see the ups and downs of things because life has changes. And typically, just for myself and other people, I would say always plan on having a five-year plan. And I think with being in the Merchant Mariner fields, a five-year plan is kind of, that's even kind of a long goal, but it's a reasonable goal. And here's the reasons why. So if at some day you want to become a captain, you have to get some education, get some training, and get some experience to get there, right? So for your education, you could go to one of the academies or you could go and get your license on your own and like become what they call a house piper, which where you go through the ranks and kind of make your way through and one day become an officer and then move up the ranks and experience there. But life isn't that simple and it's hard to map out 20 years of your life at any time and point. So I think that a more reasonable thing would be for you, Ezra, is if you just think about breaking this up into five-year segments. And why I say five years is even if you were going to a military academy or the Naval Academy or some kind of long-term goal, you, you got to get four years of training and experience. And then after that, after you get it, you have to get out to the fleet and do the job. And quite often, a lot of people that get into the merchant marine field go through a lot of the maritime schools and programs around the country, and then they get out there and they're like, wow, my goals are much different than when I was 19, 20, and I was starting out and going to school. But I invested all this time and effort to get my license, and they start sailing, but then they get girlfriends. Then they start having families or their goals change, or they want to work ashore and they want to do supportive roles because there's a lot of career opportunities outside the shipboard life. There's shore side support, port authorities, lots of other jobs and logistics that you can go into having a degree that kind of goes along that tandem. So I always tell people, you know, think about your five-year plan. And then after your five years are up or before it comes to an end, you can reassess and kind of look at, hey, is this where I want to go? Or do I want to change gears and try a new career or try something new? Because quite often the attrition level for being a merchant mariner is rather high. Not a lot of people stay for 20 years. It's, it's kind of like the military. Not a lot of people actually stay for the full Monty of a whole career in the military. A lot of people kind of get in, they test the waters, they're like, ah, it was fun. I had some adventures. I gained some experience. I made some money. And then I kind of moved on. So just think about it in that way. And every five years, reassess yourself. I think the, the plan to become a captain one day, if that's something that you continually want to do, if you're constantly reassessing and working on your qualifications, getting the shipboard experience, uh, it'll come. But you got to be hungry and you got to want it. Nobody's going to hand it to you. So just find out who the workers are on the ship and kind of emulate those people. Especially like if you're in deck or whatever, you'll see like who the bosun asked to do certain jobs. 
that's the guy you want to emulate. The one guy that knows everything there is to know about being on deck because you can glean a lot of information from him and get a lot of great training from him, hopefully, and become that guy that the bosun or the person in charge of you is going to lean on. So just uh, my two cents there. So going on to the next question from a coyote diver, it says, I am 38 years old and I've done a combined nine months of sea jobs, mainly on fish processing vessels, two different ones. I love being out there, but didn't make any money, at least the money that I was promised I would get. And I get things happen, but I want to go out there and I want to make it a career. Someone told me about getting my Merch Marine credentials, Twit card, and work on a container vessel or an oil tanker vessel. And it doesn't have to be just those, uh, Coyote Diver. There is a lots of opportunities in the maritime community, and you can look on how to get your Merch Marine credentials, on my channel, how to get your Twic on my channel. And then there's other channels that give a lot of great details there as well. So I think that if you end up working on some of these fish processing ships, it can, you're, you're just a worker. You're just hustling and either doing the, the fish processing or a support role, which you've now figured out. But the pay isn't that great. I've heard a lot of bad things about the, the fish processing ships. Uh, Providing you could qualify for your transportation wicker work ID card, i.e. you don't got no felonies or anything pending civilly or any kind of judgments against you, you should be able to get a TWIC card. So I think that's a good avenue to go if you want to stay at sea. So hopefully that helps you out. I had a, one other really great question for uh, one of the subscribers. I think it's in the friend zone, but... He had mentioned a previous video that I had done about comparing military sealift command at SIU. And he said, you know, in your video, you say for people with no experience, you recommend going to SIU. And with that, that is typically if I was going to choose between those two. And this is just my personal opinion. Everybody has to weigh out the reasons for or opposed for either decision. I think with uh, SIU, you get more time off. Military Sea Lift Command, a little bit more guaranteed employment and whatnot. But if you have no training, SIU is a great place to start. But for in the friend zone, you had mentioned that you were in the Marine Corps for a certain amount of time. And this is a super important fact that for anybody that has military service, you can buy back your time from your military service and transfer that to military sea lift command. So you will have, if you did four years in the Marine Corps, you'll have four years of seniority with MSC that goes toward your federal pension. So if you have military experience and you're not retired, because if you're retired from the military, you already get a pension. But if you were in the military, did not get a pension, you could buy back that time and count that toward your federal retirement. So that's the, the one caveat that where I would say if you had military experience, military sea lift command would be a better bet. So, and last but not least tonight, guys, I want to talk to you guys a little bit about having an exit plan. And a lot of times we get into the merchant mariner field and you don't, you're getting trained in a very niche career field. And you need to make sure that you have opportunities if something happens, if you can't go out on ship anymore because of health issues, or you just get tired of it and you need to spend more time home with family or whatever else. Out of the Merchant Mariner fields out there, Military Sea Lift Command, another big plus of being with MSC over SIU is Military Sea Lift Command being federal employment. You can transfer to a federal job shore side and keep all your seniority and time and vacation time and everything with you from when you go to sea to shore. So there are tons of federal jobs around the country and even around the world that you could get into and keep your time. So you have kind of an escape hatch if you want to go into federal service after serving with military seal of command. That was just some of the ideas and I wanted to kind of throw out to you guys. I hope you guys are having a great day, a great week. Make sure you leave your questions below and hopefully I'll get to them in the near future. Like, subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Peace.